Hi, my name is George and I'm here today to talk to you a bit about my PhD project which is understanding the role that blood fats pay, play in an autoimmune disease called juvenile onset systemic lupus erythematosus or JSLE and how this plays for an opportunity for stratified patient therapy. So a bit of background about the disease. So around 15 to 20% of all lupus patients have juvenile onset disease. It's characterized by a systemic autoimmune response with the downstream production of autoantibodies. And these autoantibodies can um, deposit into various different organs and cause unwanted inflammation, uh, which results in irreversible damage to these organs. Uh, it's a female dominant disease of 4.5 to 1. And there's an increased risk of cardiovascular disease in these patients. And finally, in the juvenile onset patients, they tend to have a worsened disease outcome compared to patients that develop the disease as adults. So defects in blood fats have been described in adults uh, with the disease. So you have these blood defects which seem to play a role on determining the immune response by playing with the fats on the immune cells. And together, the fats and the immune cells play a role in driving the increased risk of heart disease in these patients. And at the center of this is fat metabolism. So with this in mind, we hypothesize that in these juvenile onset patients, um, altered fat metabolism will lead to changes in the immune cell function, uh, which result in disease pathogenesis and increased cardiovascular risk. So the aim here was to combine clinical information on the patients, as well as cell phenotype information, um, so cell profiles from flow cytometry data, as well as blood fat analysis, so we had blood fats measured in the serum of these patients. And combining these and performing in-depth analysis, we hope to describe a mechanism for the disease, uh, discover biomarkers, and then perhaps stratify patients by their uh, metabolic profile for therapeutic intervention. So we had a young uh, JSLE cohort and matched healthy donors, so about 39 healthy controls and 35 JSLE patients. Um, males and females, a median age around 18, 19 years old. Um, mixed ethnicities, disease activities, and also treatments. So we had this uh, in-depth metabolomic analysis performed on serum from these patients, um, and this is done by NMR spec. And this gives us information um, on a lot of the uh, fats and also different metabolites in the blood. And there's a particular focus of this analysis on these biochemical assemblies called lipoproteins. And lipoproteins are responsible for transporting fats around the blood. Um, so fats, for example, as cholesterol and phospholipids. And these are recognized due to the expression of apolipoproteins on their surface. This allows them to be recognized by different organs. So <coughs> to simplify this schematically, you have this um, good and bad fat transport. And the bad fat transport, the liver effluxes these fats to these very low density, intermediate density and low density lipoproteins. And these can deposit fats into the arterial wall and also peripheral immune cells. On the other hand, you also have this good fat transport via high density lipoproteins, where the peripheral cells efflux these fats, um, which can then go back to the liver for excretion from the body. Now in the clinic, um, therapeutics targeting fat are often missed, um, and this is due to these, these broad measurements that they make. So they measure cholesterol, triglycerides, um, global high density lipoproteins and global LDL. And here you can see the normal ranges in red. Um, so it's actually not that striking how many patients are outside of these normal ranges and therefore treatments such as statins, which normalize a lot of these fats, uh, are often missed as a disease, a possible disease treatment. Now this analysis that we've um, performed on the lipoproteins, this gives us a much more in-depth um, profile. So it gives us the size and diameter of these lipoproteins um, as well as composition. And when we correlate this with disease activity, so here on the x-axis is um, the correlation of disease activity with these lipoproteins. Um, you see that on the right is association with high disease activity, on the left with low disease activity. And what we find is that these bad fat lipoproteins um, that transport fats to the periphery are associated with high activity. And with low activity, we have um, a lot more of these high density lipoproteins which bring fat back to the liver. Um, and you, as you can see, the a ApoB, this is the apolipoprotein associated with these bad lipoproteins, and the ApoA1 with the HDL. Um, we also found that albumin was lower in the low activity patients, um, which made us look at the liver function. Uh, now, albumin is characteristically low when you have more liver damage. So these high disease activity patients have less albumin and therefore have more liver damage. And just to um, confirm this, we looked at another 
marker of limb damage, um, alanine transaminase. And here we found that in the high disease activity patients, we also have an increase here, so that they've got more liver damage. So to bring this back to our schematic, we know that these high disease activity patients have more liver damage. And um, there's evidence here that more liver damage causes more, of, more efflux of fat to these VLDL particles. And therefore, and we also have less of this HDL transport back to the liver. So we then wanted to ask the question whether this is actually influencing the fat on the immune cells. So here is uh, an example of an immune cell, and these have um, on their plasma membrane these uh, fat regions called lipid rafts. And these are areas that are enriched in cholesterol and glycosphingolipids. And in these lipid rafts, uh, signaling proteins come together to allow for functional signaling in these immune cells. But what we know is that in adults with lupus, there's an increase in cholesterol and glycosphingolipids in the membrane, and therefore you have more of these lipid rafts. And this brings together signaling proteins that shouldn't really be together and abnormal functional signals. And this gives the cells a more pro-inflammatory profile. And we can measure these lipid rafts due to uh, a marker called cholerotoxin B or CTB. And this binds to glycosphingolipids and can be used as a marker for these lipid rafts. So coming back to my JSLE cohorts, we measured these lipid rafts in healthy controls and low and high disease activity in CD4 T cells, CD8 T cells, and B cells. And what we found is that these high disease activity patients have much higher lipid rafts uh, compared to both the low disease activity and the healthy controls. We also performed rock curve analysis um, as a validation that this biomarker is a good predictor of high disease activity. So the area under the curve, which is displayed as a decimal place here, Anything over 0.7 means that you've got a biomarker that is, is highly predictive of that group that you're describing. So here we've got a 0.9 for all of the three cell types um, for the high disease activity. So it's a validation here that the lipid rafts are a great biomarker for um, these patients with a worse outcome. So we wanted to see how these lipid rafts relate to the fats that are being transported in the blood. So here we correlated lipid rafts with the fats in the blood, these lipoproteins that transport the fats. And again, on the right, you have an association with high lipid rafts, and on the left, with low lipid rafts. And what we found is that with the high lipid rafts, you have more of these VLDL, IDL, and LDL, the bad fat transport. And with the um, low lipid rafts, you have more of this high-density life proteins that are taking fat away from the cell. And this was the case for CD4 T cells. We also found this for the CD8 T cells and the B cells, which all play a significant role in, in lupus. So again, coming back to our schematic, we asked the question whether this does influence the cell fats. And indeed, we've got this increase in the lipid rafts. Um, and we think this is as a result of this increased um, uptake of fats and, and perhaps a decrease in the efflux of the fats. And this is also contributing to the increased risk of atherosclerosis due to the increased deposit of fats in the arterial wall. And inflammation is also a, a causative risk for atherosclerosis as well. So what we're currently doing is looking at fat metabolism genes on these immune cells to see if there's perhaps receptors that are defective in the way that they take up the fats or perhaps how they efflux the fats. So the first conclusion here was that therapeutic targeting of fat metabolism could be um, hugely beneficial in these patients because you're going to reduce both atherosclerotic risk and the pro-inflammatory immune cell profile. And there's a recent publication that's uh, shown promise that even nutritional intervention could help to decrease this bad fat profile and normalize the inflammation, which is fantastic because it removes the reliance of these patients on drugs. It's never that simple with lupus because it's such a heterogeneous disease. Patients display different organ involvement, different symptoms. Um, so we thought it was important to, to see if you could stratify these patients for these therapies. So here, displayed as a heat map, so anything in yellow is where they have an increase in the fat compared to um, the rest of the uh, patients, which you can see listed along the top. And blue is where they have a reduction compared to the rest of the patients. And down the side, we can see that the, the lipoproteins responsible for the good and bad fat transport have clustered nicely. And when we performed un, uh, bias, uh, sorry, unbiased hierarchical clustering on the patients, we found that they stratify into three nice patient groups. Um, group one that have more of the bad fats, group two that have more of the good fats, and group three that are low for both. So we wanted to see what's, what's special about these groups. So going back to the clinical data, so SLEDI is a disease activity score for these patients, 
and there was a trend towards an increase in disease activity for this group one that have more of the bad fats. Uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate is another um, clinical measure for inflammation. Um, and again, this was higher in the, in the group that have more bad fats and was actually also higher in, the, in this group three with less good and bad fats. Uh, complement protein C3 is characteristically low um, in JSLE. And we found that this was um, low as expected in this group with the more bad fats as well as group two. So these are easy clinical measures that can help us to quickly identify these groups and see how they would respond to these fat therapies. And as expected, again, this group one with more bad fats also have more in, uh, increased lipid rafts, as you can see in yellow here, in both T cells and B cells. And finally, these uh, the group one have an increased atherosclerotic disease risk and have reduced albumin as well, um, suggesting more liver damage as well. And what we're currently finding is that they also have a different immune cell profile. Um, so there really is a, a promising uh, area here for treatment. Um, so to secondly conclude, we think that stratification based on um, fat profile will indicate how well fat modifying therapies will perform in these patients. So with that, I'd like to um, thank my group, uh, my funders, and thank you very much for listening to me today. <laughs>